Apple Vision Pro is here. And you know what does that mean? It means that very soon as a UX designer, you can get paid very well only if you understand how Vision Pro works. That is why in this multi-video playlist, I will teach you all the important foundation about spatial design, Vision OS and designing apps for the Apple Vision Pro. If you follow this playlist end to end, in the next six months, you will be well prepared to crack the highest paying internships and design jobs in the world. I've simplified this concepts in a very practical way so you can make the most of it. There's a lot to cover so without wasting any further time, let's get started. Alright, so this is the first video from our free playlist on designing apps for the Apple Vision Pro. The entire video is split into three modules. In module number one, we'll first understand what exactly is AR and VR technologies because there's a subtle confusion that a lot of designers have and we'll understand the differences and the basic foundations. In module two, I will teach you about Vision OS, which is basically the operating system on which the Apple Vision Pro would work. So I iOS is for iPhone, for Macs we have Mac OS, similarly for Vision Pro we have Vision OS. So you need to understand the basic principles of Vision OS in order to create apps for it. So there are three foundational concepts of windows, volumes and spaces so we will cover that. And then in the very last module we'll simply touch upon the concept of inputs in Vision Pro as to how do you even interact. Now this entire playlist is going to be very very in detail because when I went to YouTube I saw that there is no content which is actually practical and in-depth. So my goal is that just how I made a course on UX design, this year I'm going to make a course on spatial design because it's the next big thing. So don't think that this one video alone will tell you everything or this one video is going to cover everything. This is episode number one so we're just going to cover all the basics. So let's first understand what exactly is AR and VR technology. AR stands for augmented reality while VR stands for virtual reality. Now obviously the question comes in what is the difference between augmented and virtual and this screenshot right here that you see this is actually from the vision pro now in both of them you wear a headset right but where is the difference so this screenshot right here is from a game called iron man vr and this one is for the oculus now when you put up an oculus which is from meta everything about your real world disappears the oculus has a screen that covers everything in front of your eyes and replaces it with a virtual world. This is virtual reality. Whereas in augmented reality, you see things on top of the real world. It is augmenting, which is a complicated word for adding to your normal reality. So when you see something like Microsoft HoloLens, you would obviously see things on top of the real world. But just to give you a quick run through, these are some popular virtual reality headsets. So if you want to do some in-depth research, uh, the Oculus Rift has been very, very popular and PlayStation VR has been very, very popular. So when you see the demo videos, you'd realize that this is covering everything. On the other hand, when we look at something like Microsoft HoloLens, this is an AR tool. So can you see how these people are actually seeing this digital thing on top of their normal world? This is the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality. Now, when we talk about AR headsets, it's not like Vision Pro is doing things for the first time. So you had Google Glass, you had HoloLens, you had Lenovo Think Reality. So a lot of these things have already existed. And the only reason why I'm mentioning you this right now is that even though this playlist is about Vision OS, you can obviously see that we are slowly shifting from mobile mobiles to augmented reality and virtual reality. So it's not that you just need to stay restricted to Apple. You can always check out the guidelines that these people have on their websites as well because Microsoft has their own mixed reality documentation. Oculus has its own documentation. But I personally feel that the Vision Pro has created a very, very interesting set of guidelines. So that is why I thought that we should cover. Now the question is, what is the Vision Pro? Is it a VR headset or is it an AR headset, right? So which one is it, right? Now turns out, it is actually a mix of both because you can see things in augmented reality and they also have specific modes where everything is hidden. So it actually turns into a VR headset. But I would technically call it as an AR headset. Why? Because when we talk about virtual reality, you can never see any part of the world, right? But when we talk about AR headsets, AR headsets can cover everything from your eyes or they can cover some of it from your eyes. So AR becomes like a big umbrella under which you can actually keep the experience of a VR headset. Every gadget that Apple releases has its own operating system. And if you want to create an app for that operating system, then you need to follow the guidelines of that OS. So this OS is actually the operating system. So for Mac, you have Mac OS. I mentioned I 
iOS and then you also have watch OS if you were making apps for the Apple Watch. Now, if you don't follow the guidelines that they have declared, your app will not be approved for the App Store. The Apple Vision Pro has Vision OS. And for every single OS that Apple launches, they release detailed documentation. So even for this, if you go to developer.apple.com slash vision OS, they have created a bunch of videos, a bunch of playlists, a bunch of documentation. But for a student, it becomes very intimidating. So my job here is to simplify all of this documentation so that you can learn the important things very very quickly. So yeah, this question we have already covered. So as I said, Apple can become both an AR headset or a VR headset. It can do that because of the concept of spaces. Now let me explain you how this works. Assume that you are sitting in your living room and this is the top view of your living room, okay? Let me create this room. This is the top view of your room. You are sitting here, so this is the top view of your head and you are looking this way. So this is your sight or vision. And then you open Safari on the Vision Pro. This window comes in the front. Now you are in 3D space. This window is occupying some space in front of you. If you open multiple windows, then one window can come here, one window can come here. Basically all of these windows are sharing space. Correct? Now there are some applications for the Vision Pro that cover everything about your surroundings. So they have a cinematic mode, they have a presenter mode where you will be able to present your presentations in front of like a stage. So it's like empty stages it's to give you like rehearsals on you know giving presentations confidently. So if we talk about shared space, this is basically augmented reality because you're adding windows in your living room. But there are some applications that hide everything and they take full space. This is where you get a glimpse of the virtual reality experience because everything is hidden around you. You can't see any part of your normal living room. So just to give you as a quick example, if you open Safari in Vision Pro, right? And this is a screenshot of their demo. The Safari is actually occupying shared space. And there's this mode and we will cover these mode later on. It's called the pass through mode, which basically means that people can just pass through this window and they would clash with it, right? And you can bring it ahead. You can walk into it. You can walk away from it. So this is called the pass through mode. And this is a quick example of augmented reality. But then you can always watch movies in this indoor mode where everything is hidden. So this is the full space mode for that movie player. And it's fully immersive because you can't see anything else. And this is when the Vision Pro actually simulates virtual reality. So just to sum summarize everything in module number one. We understood the differences between AR and VR and we listed out some popular headsets. You can research them after the video. Then we had an introduction to Vision OS and some basic guidelines around spaces. And then we understood why Vision Pro is a hybrid. And I gave you an example of how it can go from either a shared space into a full space. Now let's get into the important meat of the video, which is basics of Vision OS in the first place. Now there are three new concepts that you need to learn. Windows, volumes and spaces. We've covered a bit of it, but we will cover it in slightly more detail. Now let me explain you what is a window. Now we are familiar with this concept even from our computers, right? So anytime you open an application, it opens in a window, right? And in 2D space, when you're using it on your desktop, you can only put the window on the corner, maybe drag it to the top, maybe drag it to the bottom. So if this is my computer and this is my window, I can either move it up or down or left or right. So I only have two access, which basically means two dimensional, correct? But in the Vision Pro, I can move things in 3D space. So I can still have a window how you had it right here, right? So this is an example. This is your home at the back. And then in the middle, you have a window opened up. Okay. Now, just like a computer, you can move it up and down and left and right, but you can also move it either behind or closer to you, right? So there are three axes. Okay. So in 3D space, a window is placed along three axes. So there is the Y axis, there is the X axis, and then a new axis is introduced, which is the Z axis. So I will call it the Z axis because it turns out now it's called Z. But yeah, the interesting part about the material of this window, and of course we will discuss windows in detail, but I just wanted to showcase this because in the upcoming videos, we'll go into the depths of how this window is even designed. This is not just a plain window. There's a lot of interesting things in this window. And this window is made of this one specific material. It's called glass. So they're calling it as the glass material. So this glass material actually reflects light from the surroundings. It actually judges the lighting around the room and this window would be influenced by the kind of lighting you would have around yourself. So just as a quick example, in the Mac or even in Windows, you have a dark theme and a light theme in your windows. Okay. On the Vision Pro, there is no dark or light. There's 
glass and the glass responds to the lighting around the window. So a very interesting example here is that if you are in a lighted room, uh, it would have basic text. But if you were in a dark room, all of this text would suddenly become more brighter. And this entire concept is called vibrancy. And we will cover this in detail in the upcoming videos. I don't want to like uh, dumb down all the information one single go. Uh, but just as a concept, I wanted to introduce the fact that the guidelines for these windows has completely changed. So as designers, we need to be aware of them, right? Now, when you open a window for the very first time, the system defines the starting point. So as I said, if you are sitting here, if this is the top view of your room, there's a specific distance that they have defined. Okay. And on the basis of if you're sitting or standing or lying down, they decide where this window pops up by default. So maybe by default, it pops up five feet away from you like this. You have an option to pull this closer to you. You have an option to push this away from you. So you have both these options. So it has its own starting point, but then you can shift it the way you want. So this is a quick example of another app. So this is a window right here, right? It's an astronomy app. This is another example right here. So this is the music app on the Vision Pro. Now you would notice that this is my main window, but right next to my main window, we have some smaller windows as well, okay? So windows can have extra panels. They can have tab bars, they can have toolbars, a bunch of other ornaments, but majorly we should cover tab bars and toolbars. Now, when we talk about the tab bar, and by the way, this is called the tab bar and the bottom thing is called the toolbar. And this, these words are very, very important because when you are communicating with your developers, you need to say the word toolbar because developers will create this in Swift UI. There's a proper framework in place. So they have multiple frameworks. Uh, there's Swift UI, there's reality kit. So you need to be very mindful of using the right words because that is what the developer will also search when she or he is developing, right? So when we talk about the tab bar in Vision OS, it is always vertical icons and they're fixed to one side of the window so in this case right here you can see that uh, this is the Apple TV app right and they have like a couple of icons right here now even within these icons the guidelines are very interesting so of course we will cover inputs in detail but one very interesting insight about Vision Pro is that it can detect where you are looking and your eyes can behave as input so if I'm looking at something it hovers over that icon so it knows where I'm looking and in this case the tab bar has two states one is the collapsed state one is the expanded state so this is how it would look in the collapsed state the icons are just placeholders right so I think you get this and if I look at them this is how it would open up so you can have one selected version but if you're looking at something there's a hover that happens and we will pick that separately but basically when people look at a tab bar it automatically expands and then to open a specific tab you can actually focus on that icon and then tap with your fingers. So you will see this in the input module. Basically, if your hands are at the bottom and if you just do like this, it means that you're selecting that thing. So it's very, very cool. It's absolutely groundbreaking, uh, but I don't want to like cover all of it in one single go. Uh, but this is how uh, it would actually look in the final component, right? So you had your window like this by default, it was floating on the left side and then it expanded. Okay. And you can see that the glass is overlapping. So all of it is happening in glass. So it looks very, very futuristic. Okay. Now let's just say that you have have more hierarchy you have a deeper hierarchy so you can always have one tab bar and then within that tab bar you can have more menu items right so this is called the sidebar so in apple music if you have selected something specific then you can have the sidebar and then you can have more options within the playlist icon so that is something that you can do and of course upcoming videos will cover all the detailed guidelines now when it comes to the toolbar the toolbar is always at the bottom edge so this is the toolbar from the photos app for the vision pro it is always at the bottom edge right above the window management tool. So there are some specific window management tools that let you move it around or bring it closer to you. So it's always above it. And there's a slight overlap. There's always an overlap and there's a specific point system that they have declared. We'll cover this in the spacing video, but this overlap is always there. Okay. And one another thing is that it is not just overlapping. It is slightly ahead of the main window as well. So if I were to give you a side view angle, this is my main window. Okay, like this, this is my toolbar. This is the overlap. This is the side view, by the way. Okay, so this is the overlap. But even apart from the overlap on the Z axis, on the Z axis, it is slightly above. 
so these are small small things that you need to take care of even when you're designing so you're not designing in 3d space obviously we will do this on figma but just from an awareness point of view these small small details really matter now there is no strict guideline you can always you know have the toolbar vertical and tab bar at the bottom but it is recommended to use the tab bar as a vertical component and the toolbar as a horizontal component so these are some guidelines that apple has created so we did windows which was actually 2d windows inside my 3d space but you can also have 3d space items as well and these are called volumes okay now just as an example let's just say that i don't want to show a safari tab i actually want to show the planet earth in that case it's not a window right it actually needs space on the z axis as well so in that case your volume has a horizontal base in this case it has a floor it is invisible but basically it has a space right here and this thing is at the right of the center of that horizontal base and then you can display 3d content that people can view from any angle so you can walk around it as well if you want you can rotate it you can zoom it in there's one more meditation app right so when you open this app this entire thing takes your space so this is not a window anymore this thing comes as a flower and then it expands so it's a very very immersive experience it's a full space fully immersive experience right so this won't fit in a window now we will discuss volumes later on but basically anything that you create in your vision pro would either be in a window or in a volume and windows and volume volumes can also exist together so for example in this case this is a window and this is a volume so they can always coexist in a shared space okay now i think we had already discussed the concept of spaces very briefly but one important thing is that you can either have pass through mode where a window is there and you can walk through it you can walk in front of it whatever it is right but there's also fully immersive so as i showed you the meditation app right that is not pass through like you can't just go into it and you can have things obtruding right you can always have an experience where everything is hidden which is the entire vr experience okay so pass through is basically ar while as fully immersive can help you create vr so to quickly revise everything we did in module number 2 we first understood how does a window look like and some basic ui guidelines we understood the difference between a toolbar and a sidebar or uh, these two are some of the most foundational components when we come to uh, designing for the vision pro then we understood the concept of volume spaces and modes so you can have either a fully immersive mode or a pass through mode within spaces you can either have a shared space or a fully immersive full space now the question is you've been seeing everything that vision pro gives you as an output but what about input because this is where things will completely change for a very long time we've been using our mobile phones with our fingers and our voices but now with this technology the entire game has changed altogether and i'm so excited to show you how this works now let's cover all the basics you obviously have voice input so you can always search without typing without touching so you can just talk about it and it would search for you in fact they have some specific guidelines on the input fields as well so not to go into the depths of it but you can always Firstly, see that for every single input field, they are inside the UI. So it is slightly two pixels inside the window screen. They are not obtruding and they are not on the same axis, right? So the thing is, they are slightly suppressed. And these are the guidelines that we will follow in our input fields later on. Okay. Uh, but we don't need to cover it right now then you also have the keyboard input so you can actually connect your wireless keyboard and it would have like the auto correct and the suggestions panel right on the top so it can track your hands and the keyboard and actually uh, put content float content pinning on top of the keyboard itself right then you also have your eye input so we will cover eye input separately in a different video because it's a very detailed session uh, but just to quickly iterate see when you look at something even right now when you're watching this video your eyes can see a lot on the extreme left extreme right and top and bottom right but there's always this focused field of view which is in the center so the guidelines here are that any time you want to put some content you always put it within the field of view in fact they never recommend you to stack content vertically but always stack left to right because for your neck it is easy to go left and right as compared to top and bottom it's way more uncomfortable to look like this rather than looking like this so these are some very interesting details that we will cover later on uh, but basically on the vision pro it can detect where your eyes are looking and if you look at something it creates this hovering effect that sort of denotes uh, that you're looking at that specific icon you also have hand interaction so within hand interaction you have some basic stuff uh, like touching it like this or like a tap or like a long press even drags all of these things are 
are there you also have virtual keyboard so sometimes the keyboard would just float in front of you right so you can type into this so these are basically called reality kit entities so reality kit is this framework that allows you to put in 3d models inside your app uh, this is not for you uh, but the developers would totally know this basically you can type on the keyboard as well okay this we already covered that it can actually uh, do skeletal hand tracking as well so for example there's this one sample where there's a stack of blocks you can actually put those blocks like this and do this to shift them right so they would actually track where your hand is going and you also have game controllers enabled so you can actually connect your xbox or your playstation controller and sort of play the games as if you're actually playing uh, on the console so very very cool stuff right but to be honest for me the most exciting part and the most comfortable one uh, would be communicating via the eyes and this is the latest one for us right out of all the things that i mentioned voice control hand uh, all of these things we've sort of seen them but when it comes to eyes even i don't know how would i use something with just my eyes okay and there are some very interesting guidelines so this is just a quick superficial overview uh, but you will be amazed to see how well curated how well defined these guidelines are for our eyes so the thing is our eyes naturally focus on shapes that guide our attention in the middle so because this is a circular shape my eyes are always drawn towards the center to the icon so this works well and they recommend to use rounded shapes so you can use a pill you can use a rounded rectangle but they do not recommend using icons or shapes with very very sharp edges why because when you look at something which is very sharp your eyes focus a lot on the edges in this case your eyes are going to look in the center so when it comes to something like this your eyes tend to focus on the outside decreasing the eye precision in fact even in terms of ui design it is always recommended to have a rounded pill rather than having something edgy so they are saying do this and not something which is very very sharp in fact they also recommend to stay away from strokes they recommend you to stay away from very very stark shadows so all of these things they really really put a lot of pressure onto the eyes so you should stay away from these guidelines and of course you will learn this by practice i don't expect anybody to just know these things by default so there's a lot of trial and error that designers would have to do now the question is that as you are telling us all these guidelines but we have nowhere to practice this i know I totally know that even to prototype these things you need to use the Vision Pro and the Vision Pro itself is a very very expensive instrument. I honestly don't have answer to this question but the only thing that we can do right now is to become aware to train ourselves and to be honest this is video number 1 so I have created a list of 5 to 6 videos that we will put out and I will also need 2 to 3 months to make those videos very very in depth. So by the time you reach maybe September or even October these playlists would be complete for you to learn and at that point i'm 100% sure that tools like figma will come up with prototyping tools that will help you test out these applications and these designs in real time so right now they're not there but at least we can start doing that because at the very end of this video i will actually show you the figma file released by apple that lets you create these designs right now on figma itself okay now another very important thing here is that our eyes feel more comfortable when things are not moving on the z axis so a very interesting interaction here very subtle point but very interesting is that if you have a window and let's just say that window is asking you for a payment so the payment modal opens differently so it doesn't come ahead of the window the window goes back and the modal comes on the same point let me explain you what i mean right here in this screenshot this was the original window okay this is the payment modal view so this thing goes at the back the lighting decreases it fades out whereas this thing gets all the attention so your eyes don't need to refocus on the z axis okay it's very very interesting but yeah if you want to learn more stuff in detail if you don't want to wait for me to simplify these things or uh, you can always go to developer.apple.com and they have all of these documentations right so about app construction about design like a lot of things are there right so it's very very helpful because they will actually show you a lot of demos a lot of projects that they have been working on it's really really good exposure in fact if you want to practice anything apple has released a figma file on the figma community right so it is for the vision os and the best part is that they have created all these components for you so one downside is that in figma you can't actually save a color style with ramps and blurs so they had to create a different different styles to create those materials right so they had to uh, create a style with white then a subtle overlay uh, then another style for the stroke another style uh, for the blur but now with variables coming in i'm not sure if you guys have searched for variables with variables coming in a lot of these things would be easy and the fun part is 
is that they have given you pictures they have given you like basic components so you can always reuse them and edit them and just prototype you know your basic ideas on a 2d screen you can obviously do that right so as i said they have created these glass textures for you you don't have to watch all those lame youtube videos that tell you how to do the glass morphism effect because they have defined this glass you can't mess up with it right they have multiple modes as well so this hover is basically when you're looking at it this pinch is when you tap your fingers to select it right this is selected and when it comes to selected one very important guideline is that they have made a rule that if your icon is selected it has to be a black icon on top of a white button they've actually released quite a few guidelines for the ui but yeah I, it just came up in my mind so i thought i'll share this with you so what do you do in the next five days what is your homework what is your cta after this video you first need to go to figma community and duplicate this figma file right here okay if you get time go through the apple documentation go through the figma files and just experiment just play around detach the styles see how they've created the materials see the spacing on the vision pro they don't follow the pixel system they follow the point system and we will cover the point system separately i've also made a video so a point is different from a pixel and vision pro developers work in points whereas you design on pixels right so you need to understand these small small nuances and then what i would recommend you to do is pick any web app could be facebook up uh, could be any web app on your mac or your windows and just try to convert it on the vision os but you can obviously do this once you've gone through the figma file once you've done a bit of the documentation obviously i will be uploading one video every week or at least bi-weekly to keep you updated with all the latest guidelines and all the latest news and resources right in fact if you have zero clue about ux design i would recommend you to finish those things first because if you don't understand mobile design and the basics of mobile design which includes palettes typography spacing in general i have created a free course on my youtube channel it is available in both hindi and in english the sad part is that people have only seen the first 10 videos and they don't finish the entire 15 episode course folks you're missing out on a lot a lot of valuable knowledge is there in the last five episodes so don't miss that in fact we also have some very interesting videos on improving your communication skills on your networking skills i am mentioning this here because this is a very underrated playlist but i have benefited a lot from these skills so i just thought i'll share that with spatial design coming in you need to make sure that you are using your time in the best way possible because the interfaces will be complicated you'll have to create a lot of copy a lot of dummy text and at this point it helps to know a bit of ai tools right it really really helps to know a bit of mid journey it helps to know a bit of chat gpt please make sure you guys are updating yourself about this i've created a free playlist that will give you so much of knowledge about chat gpt and mid journey in general please check it out all links would be in description in fact i have also released a free ebook on multiple chat gpt prompts basics of prompt engineering you will find the link in description so to quickly revise everything we did in module number three we understood different types of inputs uh, we understood voice eyes and hands we understood some guidelines for ui design when it comes to specifically making stuff that is comfortable to the eyes and then i gave you some free resources to understand more about vision pro to actually understand how these interfaces would be designed on figma the entire pdf that you see right now will be uploaded uh, on google drive i will share the link in description so you can use this pdf for free to create your own notes to go through all the resources with that being said please make sure you comment how did you like this video do you want me to create more videos like these because these are slightly long videos not sure if you're interested in knowing more about this in detail i personally know that the people the product managers the developers and the designers who understand vision pro will have very very high leverage next year from january onwards when this gadget is available to everyone we've been uploading some very cool stuff on instagram so make sure you follow us there on anshmara.ai with that being said i hope that you're taking care of your mind and and body this is your dost anch mehra signing out if you like this video make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button i regularly upload videos on ux design marketing and storytelling